The following are a series of milestones in the history of independent game development, including not just the games themselves, but the tools that enable their creation and the culture that has arisen around them. Leave a comment if you think I missed anything. Ready? Go! 1973, David All publishes 101 Basic Computer Games, a book of type-in programs converted from their original assembly languages to basic. It is so popular that at one point, there are more copies in print than computers capable of running the programs. Late 1975, Rusty Rutherford creates The Dungeons, better known as Pettit 5, the first of a series of Dungeons & Dragons fan games created for the University of Illinois Plato Computer System. May 1984, the UK company Telecomsoft establishes the Firebird brand to publish hobbyist games for 8-bit computer systems. December 17, 1992, ASCII releases the first edition of RPG Maker, an early video game creation tool. Illegal copies would quickly spread outside of Japan. 1993, Harry Dodgson produces the first homebrew cart, a monitoring utility for the Atari 2600. The first homebrew game for the Atari 2600, a Tetris clone, would come out two years later. January 26, 1994, Brendan Weiber releases a public version of the Doom editing utility. This enabled users to easily create wads or custom levels for Doom. The modding scene expands quickly. November 3rd, 1994, Justin Fisher coins the term Total Conversion to describe his Doom wad Aliens TC. A Total Conversion replaces all elements of the Source game, effectively creating a new game inside of an existing one. May 12, 1998, Macromedia releases Macromedia Flash 3. While intended for developing advanced interactivity for websites, Flash 3 was also sophisticated enough to develop web-based video games. September 23rd, 1998, Patrick Wilson and Lane Walker Avena found the TI Calculator Programming Alliance, a group dedicated to creating programs for the TI-83 Plus and its successors. They become most known for developing a series of ports and original games for scientific calculators. March 15th, 1999, the first independent games festival is held at the Game Developers Conference. The first grand prize is awarded to a never-released game called Fire and Darkness. April 7, 1999, Team Fortress Classic, originally based on the modified version of Quake, becomes the first mod to receive a standalone commercial release. July 25, 1999, Newgrounds founder Tom Fult posts the game Pico's School, a game far more complex than what was the norm in Flash development at the time. November 15, 1999, Mark Overmars releases the first version of Game Maker. This system and its successors will be used to create numerous well-known indie games, including Undertale, Hyperlight Drifter, and Nuclear Throne. September 24, 2000, Fusoya releases the first version of Lunar Magic, a level editing tool for Super Mario World. This tool and similar programs for other games greatly expand the ROM hacking scene. March 15, 2002, the first indie game jam is held in Oakland, California. This was followed in April by the first Ludum Dare, a virtual game jam still held to this day. November 23rd, 2002, David DeCarmine creates a hobbyist development forum called Hollow World. This would gradually turn into a platform for game discovery, eventually turning into Game Jolt, a significant site for young developers. November 21st, 2004, The Behemoth releases Alien Hominid on the PS2, one of the first independently developed games to come out on a console. December 20th, 2004, Daisuke Amea releases Cave Story, one of the first highly visible indie games. Cave Story spreads rapidly overseas after the first translation patch is released by fan translation group Aeon Genesis in January 30th, 2005. June 8, 2005, Unity Technologies releases the first version of the Unity engine. In subsequent years, this would become a standard engine for small developers, appearing in games like Among Us, Cuphead, and Subnautica. November 29, 2006, Face Punch Studios releases Gary's Mod, a source-based sandbox game. While sales are slow to start, it eventually moves 1 million copies in its first five years, and over 20 million copies as of 2024. January 4th, 2007, Something Awful Forum member Michael Slowbeef Sawyer posts a video playthrough of The Immortal, creating the first video Let's Play. This would become a major tool for indie game discovery throughout the 2010s. March 3rd, 2007, Paul Priest posts the Flash game Desktop Tower Defense to Congregate, racking up 15 million plays in its first four months. Priest says that the game generated $100,000 per year in revenue, enough for him to become a full-time developer. October 2nd, 2007, Justin Kahn opens his Justin.tv live streaming platform to the general public. It quickly becomes popular for streaming video game footage. 
August 27, 2008, Microsoft initiates the first Xbox Summer of Arcade featuring the indie games Braid and Castle Crashers. Events in subsequent years would exhibit more indie titles such as Dust and Elysian Tale and Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. December 14th, 2008, World of Goo wins the first award for independent games at the Spike Video Game Awards. November 1st, 2009, Mark Essen raises $5,040 on Kickstarter for his game Flywrench, which becomes one of the first games to receive funding through the platform. March 12th, 2010, a group of indie developers announced the Indie Fund, an organization meant to provide capital for new developers. Games funded through this fund include Hollow Knight, Tunic, and The Swapper. April 29th, 2010, Steve Jobs publishes Thoughts on Flash, declaring that Flash would not be allowed on Apple's mobile devices. This led to a sharp decline in Flash development, with Adobe announcing the following year that they would be phasing it out. May 4th, 2010, Wolfire Games initiates the first humble indie bundle, popularizing the pay-what-you-want model for video games. The following year, they spin this off into a dedicated site which eventually becomes a publisher. July 21st, 2010, Play Dead releases Limbo. Not only does this game receive broad critical acclaim, but it sells 1 million copies within 16 months of its launch. November 11th, 2010, Unity launches the Unity Asset Store, allowing people to buy and sell assets for game development. While this opens up development to new and smaller developers, it also results in a wave of cheap, quickly made games intended solely to generate a fast profit. May 16th, 2011, ReLogic releases Terraria. It would go on to sell 44 million copies, making it not just one of the best-selling indies of all time, but one of the top-selling games, period. June 6, 2011, Justin.tv spins off its video game streams into their own platform, Twitch.tv. This would go on to become an essential means of game discovery for smaller developers. January 20th, 2012, Indie Game The Movie, a documentary focusing on several prominent indie developers, premieres at the Sundance Film Festival. March 13th, 2012, Double Fine raises $3 million via Kickstarter for their game Broken Age, making it the first game to receive seven figures through the platform. August 30th, 2012, Valve launches the Steam Greenlight program, enabling users to act as a first approval system for new games. The intent is to streamline the process for new developers, though the process remains very slow at first. October 23rd, 2012, Devolver Digital, at this time best known for publishing the Serious Sam series, publishes Hotline Miami, becoming one of the first indie publishers. March 3rd, 2013, Leaf Corcoran launches Itch.io, further opening up online markets to small developers. July 27, 2013, Ouya announces the Free the Games Fund, offering matching funds to any developer who can successfully crowdfund their own money. The fund becomes embroiled in controversy owing to credible allegations that some developers are artificially gaming the system. August 29, 2013, Valve modifies the Greenlight program to make it easier to use, approving 100 games in one day as a symbolic gesture. The following year, Steam's catalog grows by 80%, the largest increase since the store was added. January 14, 2014, Juan Linetsky and Ariel Manzor released the first open source version of the Godot engine, which would become a popular Unity competitor. September 15, 2014, Microsoft buys the rights to Minecraft for $2.5 billion. It will go on to become, by some metrics, the most owned video game of all time. April 9, 2015, Brendan Green releases Player Unknown's Battle Royale, which would eventually turn into PUBG Battlegrounds. This game would set several records, including a high watermark for concurrent players on Steam. April 28, 2015, Matthias Valadares releases the browser-based game Agar.io. This game spreads by word of mouth and via YouTube, where videos featuring the game had accrued 2 billion views within a year. This would go on to inspire other developers to create similar .io games. February 26, 2016, Concerned Ape releases Stardew Valley. It sells 1 million copies within the first two months and would go on to sell 20 million copies within five years. Late 2016, spurred on by the sizable growth of the indie sector, Steam's library hits 10,000 games. June 13th, 2017, Valve retires Steam Greenlight, replacing it with Steam Direct. This program does not feature user screening, instead relying on an upfront fee to cut down on low-quality games. January 15th, 2018, Ben Lattimore begins the Flashpoint Archive project aimed at preserving Flash games and other applications before the software reaches end of life. 
December 6th, 2018, Epic Games launches the Epic Games Store, a direct competitor to Steam. Epic aims to draw small developers by offering a more favorable profit share, kicking off a conflict between the two launchers. 2019, indie games have generated more than $5 billion in revenue on Steam, with estimates placing the yearly revenue at $1 billion. August 4th, 2020, Fall Guys developer Mediatonic reports that the game has attracted 1.5 million players within the first 24 hours after its release. January 12th, 2021, the Kill Switch for Flash activates, ending Flash in most places for good. Flash portals spend the year scrambling to keep their games functional. February 2nd, 2021, Iron Gate Studios releases Valheim in early access. It sells more than 5 million copies in 5 weeks. November 1st, 2021, a team led by David Phantom Arcade Brown releases Friday Night Funkin' on Newgrounds. It becomes the most popular game ever released on the site, generating over 66 million plays as of 2024. September 2022, according to Cloud Imperium Games, Star Citizen has raised more than $500 million from its backers. This makes it not only by far the largest crowdfunding campaign for a video game, but one of the largest crowdfunded projects ever. September 12th, 2023, Unity Technologies changes the fee structure for the Unity engine to one based on installs. This generates an immediate backlash from developers, forcing Unity to clarify and then revise their fee structure. January 28th, 2024, Pocket Pair releases Pal World in early access. It sells 8 million copies in its first week and peaks at 2.1 million concurrent players, second only to PUBG. And that's everything up to today. There's more to come, so be sure to subscribe for more on the history and the future of Indie.